I'm Dr. Bernard. This is my TA Serenity, and these triangles, rectangles, and trapezoids are distributed loads. As a static student, every time you see a distributed load, you're gonna have to convert it to a point force before you can solve for reaction forces. Every time, you just have to. Looks like your TA Serenity might be about to start a nap, so let's learn about distributed loads quietly. A distributed load is just like a point force, except, you know, spread out. So the units are gonna be force divided by distance. Consider the roof of a house covered in snow. All of this snow might weigh 400 pounds, but it's not all concentrated at one single point. That 400 pounds is spread uniformly across the entire roof. And if you have a total roof length of 40 feet, a uniformly distributed load would be 400 pounds divided by 40 feet, or 10 pounds per foot. And so looking at the problem statement that I'm gonna be solving today, you'll see that each of the distributed loads is represented as a force divided by a distance, which gives an indication both of how strong the force is as well as how spread out it is. So forces don't have to be uniformly distributed, spread out equally everywhere across the area. It's possible for them to be skewed over to one side with more force on one area and less on another. The most common distributions you're gonna see in your statics class are gonna be this uniform distribution, a rectangle, a triangular distribution that starts at zero on one side and gets larger towards the other, and a trapezoidal distribution that's sloped like a triangle but doesn't start from zero. All right, so let's solve this example problem and replace all three of these distributed loads with their equivalent point forces. Replacing a distributed load with a point force requires finding both the magnitude of the force, which I'm labeling as F, and also the line of action of that force, which I'm labeling here as X, as a distance from that leftmost pin joint. You're gonna solve for F, the magnitude of the force, using area under the curve. For these geometric shapes, it's just gonna be the area of rectangles and triangles. Then the location of the force, the line of action, this distance X, is gonna be found by locating each force at the centroid of the shape that it represents. Let's do the rectangle first, then the triangle, then the trapezoid last. Distributed load one is the rectangle in the center. Area of a rectangle is base times height. So 100 pounds per foot times the width of four feet gives a magnitude for F1 of 400 pounds. To find the distance X1, the centroid of a rectangle is directly in its own center. So using all the distances at the bottom of the figure, there's an 11 foot distance that measures all the way to the right side of that distributed load. So then I subtract off two feet, which is the distance from the right side back to the center. And I get a value for X1 of nine feet. Force two is the triangle on the left-hand side. Area of a triangle is one half base times height. That triangular distributed load increases from a load of zero pounds per foot on the far left up to 80 pounds per foot on the right. Since the pin joint sort of splits up the base of the triangle, you get the overall base by adding both the one foot to the left of the pin and the three feet to the right of the pin. And then you multiply by the height of the triangle, which is the given 80 pounds per foot. Multiplying this out, F2 is 120 pounds. The centroid of a rectangle was one half of the base because the centroid is directly in the middle. But a triangle centroid is gonna be skewed. It's gonna be closer to the tall side of the triangle. And even though we haven't covered centroids yet, you can look up the centroid of a triangle in a table in the back of your textbook or in a table in the FE reference exam manual. And you'll see that the centroid of a triangle, instead of being one half of the base, is actually gonna be one third of the base. And of course, it's closer to the tall side of the triangle. So that's why the purple arrow isn't drawn directly in the middle of the triangle, it's drawn skewed closer to the right-hand side. Within the distributed load itself, the location of the force is going to be one-third of the base, so one-third of four, and that's the distance from the right-hand side, the tall side of the triangle, which is a distance of 1.33. And so the far right-hand side of the triangle is a distance of three feet from the pin joint, so I'm subtracting three minus 1.33 in order to find X2. And I get a value of X2 then is 1.67. And I'm labeling all these forces from the pin joint because when you get to rigid body equilibrium, you're gonna be solving for forces at this pin joint. So that's why having all of your distances measured to a joint is gonna be more valuable to you than measuring your distances to the edge of the object itself. 
The trapezoid problem may seem like it's going to be a lot more difficult because when you check the centroid table for a triangle, you'll see that there is no trapezoid shape there. So how would you find the centroid of it then? So the shortcut is going to be you're going to take the trapezoid and cut it into a triangle stacked on top of a rectangle, or you can cut it into two triangles. For the rectangle and triangle method, you get a forces of 480 and 120 pounds. And splitting the shape into two triangles, you get forces of 240 pounds and 360 pounds. So either method, you still get 600 pounds of total force. But since the values are a little bit different, they end up located in slightly different locations. Since the entire wood beam is 20 feet long, this means the right hand side of the trapezoid is 19 feet from the pin. Since the trapezoid has a base of 4 feet and half of that is 2, you get 17 feet to the center of the rectangular portion of the trapezoidal distributed load, labeled as X3. And X4, which is the location of F4, which represents the triangle stacked on top of the rectangle. Remember, the centroid of a triangle is one third of the base of the triangle, and it's going to be closer to the tall side of the triangle. So one third of four is 1.33. 19 minus 1.33 gives 17.67 feet for X4. So now suppose instead you were using the two triangles method. X4 is still going to be exactly the same. The center of the triangle is one third of the base, closer to the right hand side. So 19 minus 1.33 is 17.67. But the 120 pound foot triangle has its tall side on the left side of this distributed load. And so you can calculate this 16.33 feet location as either 19, the right hand side, minus two thirds of the base, or 15 feet to the left hand side plus one third of the base, and either answer gets you to a distance of 16.33 feet. It may seem odd right now that you're getting to different answers. You have different forces and different distances based on which method you choose, the rectangle triangle or the two triangle method, but both of these methods are correct. And later when you get to rigid body equilibrium, you'll see that they both will result in the same reaction forces. Now, which method you choose to use is completely up to you. My personal preference is to use the rectangle and triangle method because I think rectangles are the easiest shapes of all, so why wouldn't I want to use one? But it's an extremely common mistake for students who use the rectangle triangle method to use the total 180 feet as their height of the triangle. They forget to subtract the 120 foot rectangle from it. That's the best reason to use the two triangles method. With the two triangles method, the two numbers you're given at the left and right hand side of your trapezoid, those are the two heights of each of your triangles. So there's no extra subtraction step. And here for a final answer, I've redrawn the beam without any distributed loads, just my four point forces. And at this point, you would be perfectly set up for rigid body equilibrium problem to solve for the reaction forces at that pin and roller joint. The next video you're gonna wanna watch is another distributed load video, but it'll answer the question, what if the distributed load is the shape of a curve? And I wanna warn you in advance, there is going to be calculus. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.